Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory coming to you from the beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina area. It is raining here today, but all is well because you know what? The sun is out somewhere. Uh, the, you know, when you fly, the higher you go, you know, sometimes you, you fly and it'll start raining and the pilot will say he's taking you up and he's taking you up and he just take, he or she, because I've flown with women pilots too. They take you up and guess what? Yeah, I've flown with women pilot. I've flown with African uh, American uh, African American pilots, male and female. That can tell you how much traveling I used to do. Uh, so they are out there. Um, so they take you up and you see the sunshine. And guess what? If it's raining here, it might be the sun shining somewhere else. So always remember the sun is out. Oh, and I just, you know, I, I'm just so thankful. You know, I always say this, I never want to be an ungrateful person. I am thankful for all that my God has done for me. Uh, so I just, I, I don't know, I just hate to say that today. Also today, I want to invite you all to our first official wrist adjustment coding boot camp. Uh, this boot camp is going to take uh, place in May of this year, uh, about what, two or three weeks from now, uh, May the 14th and the 15th. Uh, it will be virtual via Zoom. Um, we will uh, be going over all the different things you need to know about HCC coding because HCC coding falls under uh, that, uh, the risk adjustment. Um, you would this class will introduce you to what risk adjustment is it will also help prepare you to sit for the uh, AAPC uh, risk adjustment certification uh, so it will help you in that uh, area because we'll be covering things that they will possibly cover on the test so I look if you want more information uh, go to www.mascodingsolutions.com and it will take you to our site where you can get more information about the risk adjustment uh, coding boot camp. Remember, uh, also remember this, this book, you must have had some type of coding, uh, either worked in coding or you have, have to have had some type of coding class because we will not be teaching ICD 10 CM coding. Now we will be going over all the coding guidelines that's very pertinent uh, to HCC coding, to risk adjustment coding. We're going to be talking about documentation, uh, what that's supposed to look like, how you can be of a help to your physician and or your organization. So keep that in mind. I would love to have you in class. Uh, we will be applying for AAPC hours. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to be applying for maybe anywhere between 10 and 12 hours. Um, so if you need some hours and you want to get some additional education on HCC coding, as they call it, then you will want to be in our risk adjustment boot camp. And I look forward to having you in our boot camp. So today, it's been a while since I talked about PCS coding. If you are going to take uh, the CCS or you, you set them for your CDIP or CDI credentials through um, uh, I think uh, the Actus Association and Ahima give out the CDIP and I believe Actus give out the um, what the, there's this ACCD or something like that uh, so anyway if you plan on taking one of those tests then you really need to know about PCS coding and so today, a PCS coding stands for Procedural Coding System. It is a procedural coding system that is used exclusively in inpatient slash facility-based coding. So inpatient coders have to code procedures with this book. Now I have this one here. Uh, there are other organizations that uh, put this book out. Uh, and you know what else? You can actually go out to CMS website and uh, you can look on the side 
uh, where they have the menu and you can click on PCS uh, code book and you can actually download this code book uh, you know into your computer it's not it's a very large file uh, but every book is based on what's in that file so whatever's in that PCS file on the CMS website is also in the book that you may purchase uh, like I said there's a lot of different organizations that sell the book uh, you know as a coder you may get to your preference uh, what you want to use but I don't promote one book over the other now one of the things I want to say to you as well if you plan on getting your CCS or your CDS or uh, some type of, of um, CDI credential every code that we may code now in the uh, in the or uh, every code that we may code even if that procedure is done in the OR, does not necessarily, for CMS purposes, make it an OR procedure. So remember, if you're taking the CCS or you're taking some type of CDI credential test, they're going to talk to you about MSDRGs, uh, Medicare Severity Related DRGs, okay? And uh, the way Medicare have the DRG, MSDRG set up, you have what they call medical MSDRGs and you have what they call surgical MSDRGs. Um, and so CMS have decided what of all these 70,000 codes that we have in this book, they have decided which ones are they considered to be a surgical uh, procedure and it will go into the surgical MSDRG and that doesn't mean that everybody has to go to the OR you know you can take a patient to the OR and do a closed reduction no fixation device and we see this with a uh, hip fracture some uh, hip replacement excuse me so once someone have a hip replacement what happened is sometimes those hip replacement they get dislocated uh, and so they may take them to the OR and pop that thing and put the hip back in, put that uh, joint replacement back in place. They use general anesthesia, they use OR time, but guess what? That's not an OR procedure. And so if your patient had a, a prostatic joint dislocation of the hip, you're going to code that, you're going to code that procedure. Because you know we don't uh, we don't care we we care if we get paid, but every OR procedure we are gonna code that. But guess what? I'm not gonna go into a surgical MSDRG because that's the way it works. If I have a patient that have an excisional debridement open, you know, not percutaneous, which we don't do them that way anyway. But if I have an excisional debridement, guess what? They can do that at the bedside. They can do it down in the ER. But that is considered to be an OR procedure. And if you perform that procedure, guess what? You will go into a surgical related MSDRG. So I just wanted to mention that, that even though we make, you, you take somebody to the OR for an I and D, an incision and drainage, guess what? incision and drainage don't move the meat needle you will not be in a surgical MSDRG so keep that in mind uh, we have to under when you go to do PCS coding you have to remember it has its own set of guidelines your rules and regulations uh, if you when you buy your book they're gonna have them in the front of the book but you can also go out to uh, Google or Safari or Bing whatever you like to use and put in uh, PCS uh, got coding guidelines and put in for 2021 so you'll get the most recent version and so your code you got to know those coding guidelines and also remember when you're doing PCS coding every PCS code have to have seven characters and PCS coding is based on uh, these seven characters uh, as a process you know, you, you're doing a process here. When you, uh, we call it building a code. With PCS, you want to build a code. Your first uh, character, 
will always be what section of this book you in. So zero mean you in that surgical section. It is the largest section in the PCS book. If I have a one, then I know I'm in OB. If I have a two, uh, I, I can't remember what two is. Maybe that's um, administration. Let's look and see uh, what two uh, is. So two is placement. Uh, three is administration. And um, bone marrow, like a bone marrow transplant goes on the administration. Whereas if you do a kidney transplant, that's a solid organ. And so you would be in the urinary system for kidney. So the first uh, character is what section you are in. The second character is what body system you are in. And it's broken down by the major body system with some additional one. You got your central nervous system. You got your cardio, your circulatory system. You have your urinary system, you see. So you have all your systems. Um, and so you're going to tell the system. The next character is your root operation. What, what root operation did you perform? Um, and I won't have time to go through all these, so maybe I'll just take them one day. By, but today is just a big overview. Uh, so you got your root operation. Well, the next thing, the fourth thing is your body part. So in your central nervous system, you only have the brain and the spinal cord because that's what it consists of. When you are doing your circulatory system, you got your heart, you got your valves. So those are body parts. Then you have your approach. Don't make it hard. Your approach is how did they get to where they need to go? Did they cut, did they cut them open? Or did they use a scope? Did they use a needle? Those are your approaches. And then, of course, did you have any devices? Um, now, most procedures do not have a de device, so you're going to have the character Z, as in zebra, a lot of time in device. And then you're going to have your qualifier. Uh, qualifiers kind of help uh, put the procedures together. For instance, uh, the ending of the procedure, I guess, you have a lot of Z's because a lot of procedures don't have qualifiers. But let's say you're doing a coronary artery bypass. If you're doing a coronary artery bypass, as you know, they want to get a new blood supply to go around the blockage that's in the heart. And so your qualifier, so when you go to, I think it's zero, uh, of course, zero because it's medical surgical. I mean, yes, and then you have two for circulatory. And then you're going to have um, your root operation would be three bypass. Uh, most, uh, then now, I'm doing coronary artery bypass. So my body part is going to represent those coronary arteries that, you know, one, two, three, or four, whatever. My qualifier is going to be where the new blood supply is coming from. And so that's how that works, okay? Always remember, so you're going to have a lot of ZZs. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of qualifiers, just depending on what type of procedure you are doing. Uh, and always remember this too. And this is why PCS can be a little bit complicated. In the official coding guidelines, if you go to rule A11, A is an apple, 11, it will tell you that the terminology that your doctor used may not always be the same terminology that you will see in the PCS book. For instance, uh, your doctor will say that the patient have a open reduction with a internal fixation device. Now, see when you go to your root operations here uh, in your book, you may not see a uh, reduction. So you now gonna have to think, okay, what is uh, the root operation for uh, a reduction? I probably shouldn't have done that because I hadn't done a reduction. It is going to be reposition. So your physician very rarely say reposition. They say I'm doing an ORIF, I'm doing an open reduction with an internal fixation device. 
you do not go back to the physician and say to that surgeon, well, you got to use reposition. No, you have to know that reproduction, uh, 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 reduction is a reposition. See, that's what you have to know. Your physician will say, they, you know, the coronary artery bypass is simple, but guess what? When you have a, a, a surgeon that does a colostomy, well, see, you won't find the word, you won't find a root operation that said colostomy. Your root operation is a bypass. And so you have to know, hey, anytime I see a colostomy, I have to call the bypass. So, anyway, that, that is about all I'm going to do today. I'm probably out of time anyway. But um, just remember PCS coding, you are doing a process. You are building a code, and you're going to have to know in your um, coding, uh, when you look at that physician or that surgeon note, you got to say, what does this equate to? It's not going to be appropriate for you to constantly query the physician. You're going to have to, once again, I'm going to say this, there are going to be times when I go Google something. Because, see, with PCS coding, you have to think. And, and really, people, sometimes, I don't want to think this hard. But I have to. I have to think, what is the surgery designed to do? What is that surgery really trying to fix? Because sometimes uh, I do these little quizzes, uh, and I would be thinking something is like, uh, I've always struggled with division versus a release and I'm telling you every time I think uh, I do these little uh, quizzes I say okay this has got to be a, a division because the division is cutting down in two a release is when you're trying to uh, free up a body part and sometimes I'm like really I'm thinking it's a division and they tell me it's a release I'm like really and I, so I have to go back, I got to read the rationale, why is this a release versus a division? And so, yeah, sometimes it can be challenging to code PCS, but we can do it. So anyway, this is Mary, I'm signing off for today. Don't forget about our wrist adjustment coding. And that's, you know, wrist adjustment coding is based on ICD-10 CM codes. And so it's so important that we get it right because money is tied to it. So don't forget to follow me on Be The Buzz. Sign up for our new Facebook group, Be The Buzz. Uh, it's a work in progress, um, but um, it's coming along. Love to have you as a member. Uh, follow me on hmm, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram. You know, we got an Instagram account now. And we are doing some things on Instagram. So please be sure to follow us. I look forward to it. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to send me your questions. I try to answer them. And I, it's time for me to go, but I have to say this. Uh, I got a question, uh, a response to something I said a while back. And I did try to uh, respond. But just in case, you didn't get it. And so I said, and I'm still going to say this. You got to have a good attitude when you apply for a job. And so this person um, commented and said, well, good attitude don't always get you a job. No, it doesn't. But a bad attitude would definitely keep you from getting a good job sometimes. So, you know, there's a lot of different factors that goes into us getting a job. And so, you know, all I'm going to say to you is this. Show up well. Show up well. Be it in your attitude, be it in your dress, show up well. And so, no, a good attitude may not always get you the job. You know what, people? Sometimes we don't get a job because it's just a formality to put the job out there. They already know who they're going to hire. But laws say you got to put it out there. So just because you don't get the job, don't mean that you wasn't qualified. There's a lot of things that goes into that. And so I always want you to keep your chin up and, you know, don't be discouraged. I know it's tough out there now getting this job. Heck, I applied for a job a couple weeks ago. I never heard anything. 
you know. You know, maybe my resume didn't look like I walked on water. So don't be discouraged, okay? This is Mary signing off. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.